Hello my friends! Welcome to the 30 days rank post challenge, where I'm uploading a new ML guide for 30 days straight. We're on day 11 today, here you have the full upload plan for the challenge. Today we will talk about how you should rotate with each role, both in low and high rank games. There are some differences you have to adjust to. In this season I have the privilege to still swim around in legend rank, partly because I have no time to rank up because of all the videos I'm producing and partly because as mentioned my wife still wants to play mostly bro with me. What's good about that is that I can give you many tips on how to rotate in these ranks. In higher ranks it's usually two solo laners on the sides, one jungler, one mage mid and a tank. In the lower ranks it looks quite different. The tank usually goes with the marksman hero to the gold lane and they stick together the whole time. What obviously means that the mage have to rotate around alone and that the player on the XP lane and the jungler have less support. Before we start, the 5 shoutouts of the day goes to Illusion Official, Jinhiko Dezaki, Nicolas Sesto, Jamestic James and Akihu Svu. You guys know the drill, write something nice and get the chance for a shoutout. By the way, yes, I let the comment picker choose the comments. When your comment pops up and you wrote something nice, you're in. As always, all information about the giveaway are in the description, so let's get into the meaty part now. Let's begin with the very basic. What does rotation even mean? Well, it certainly does not mean that you're supposed to spin around in circles. I was surprised that this term was not even explained in the tutorial section, since it's a basic concept that every player should know. Rotation is the act of moving away from your lane to be able to attain certain objectives and or kills. What objectives are should be clear by now. If you're not sure about that, go and check out my both noob mistakes videos no offense by the way, and come back after you're done watching them. So whenever you're rotating, you should have a clear goal in your mind. Mostly it will be helping in ganks, pushing a lane, secure the turtle and so on. This is the basic idea of rotation. Now let's get into each role. As a side laner, your first job is to keep the towers on your lane safe and try to break down the enemies. In the early game, you should stay on it and try to get the upper hand over your dance partner. For this, you need to be aware of one thing, which hero is the stronger one in the early game. There are certain heroes who already deal a massive amount of damage without any items. Take one of my favorite heroes, Jord as an example. With his missiles, you can easily harass your enemy from level 1 on. So when your hero is stronger than your counterpart in the early game, you have to play super aggressive. Try to poke the enemy as much as possible without touching the minions and zone the enemy out. Just last hit the minions for the extra golden XP. If you're playing as MM in the lower ranks, it will be a 2v2 most of the time. So there, it's a fight about which MM reaches level 4 first. Because with your ult, you have a huge advantage against the other MM. If your hero is weaker than the opponent in the early game, you have to play smart and defensive. Just try to get the gold and XP from the minions, without risking too much. Or in general, don't go up against a strong early game hero with a weak one. Once the early game skirmish is over, you can start to rotate. What is the most important rule before rotating away from your lane? Exactly, clear your wave. There's absolutely no point rotating away from your lane when the wave is up and your enemy can just freely put your lane through. You can only leave them alive when there's no way that the enemy can start to push, because he's dead for example or in the middle of a gang somewhere else. On the other hand, I would use this opportunity to push my lane. But that's not the topic, we want to talk about rotation. In the early to mid game, there are certain points where you should rotate. When the turtle is at your side of the map, you should definitely try to help out your jungler. If it's on the other side though, it's a good chance to push your lane, since no one will fight it except your dance partner. When you see a gank is unfolding on your side of the map, it's a good idea to rotate, to turn around the gank into your favor or to pick up the highly damaged enemies, if your team lost out already. You should also rotate to the mid lane to defend it, if the mid laner is for whatever reason not able to do it, maybe because he rotated to the other side lane for a gank or because he lays down in the dirt. By the way, the mid lane is usually where your rotation should end as a side laner. If you run across the whole map, you will be first too late to any party that is going on and secondly, you will not be able to rotate back on time before the enemy push through your whole lane. So whenever you hopefully achieve the purpose of your rotation, go back to your lane. The rotation usually shouldn't be much longer than the time in between two waves. That's why as a top laner, the mid lane and everything above is your rotation area, while as a bot laner, 
the mid lane and everything below is yours. So now let's talk about what you can do after you won or lost your lane. If you manage to destroy the enemy's tower, you can focus on pushing the mid lane and invade the enemy's jungle. Just don't forget to continue clearing your waves before moving away. All your good work is for nothing if you forgot to clear your waves and let the enemy push your lane through. This is actually something I saw so many times. A player was dominating his lane but totally forgot in his bloodlust that he still have to defend his lane and the longer the game goes, the faster you can push a tower through. Otherwise, be always in the middle of the trouble from now on, especially when fighting the Lord. Now, what can you do when you lost your lane? One way is waiting for a chance to split push. Basically, when your enemy does exactly what I just explained, you shouldn't do. It also may be worth to take a little risk and try quickly to push a tower through. But in general, when you lost your lane, you have to hope that your team is helping you. And if all lanes lost out, well, f In general, as a side laner, you are more reacting to situations instead of creating them. Creating situations is something for mid laners, for example. You realize the transition I've made here? Mid laners are usually mages. They are so awesome because they can carry the whole team in the early game and act as a great support in the late game. Mid laners are also supposed to rotate around the map constantly to create the already addressed situations and opportunities. But there is of course a difference that in lower ranks they rotate mostly alone or with a jungler, while in higher ranks they usually do it together with a tank. After clearing the first minion wave, you should reach level 2. This is the point where you can already make your first rotation. Go and try to secure the Pokemon with the help of your jungler. If an enemy shows up, poke them away. When the enemy is invading the jungle early on, you should of course try to counter it, so your jungler can farm and reach his power spike at level 4 as soon as possible. After clearing the next wave, you should usually rotate to the lane where the turtle will spawn. If the opposite lane really needs support though, you can also rotate there. This is the basic rotation concept for a mid laner. Always rotate to the place where you are the most needed at the moment. You should try now to force a gank at the lane to give your side laner an advantage over their counterpart. By the way, after a successful gank in the side lane, don't stick around there. Help to push the lane further if possible and keep rotating afterwards. Try to create as many gank opportunities as you can. You as a mage can almost overpower all other heroes in the early game, so make use of that time. When it's time to get the turtle, you should be there to secure it. That does not mean that you have to attack it with the jungler necessarily. You can also hide in a bush to set an ambush. And as soon as the enemy show up, you let it snap and kill that enemy. Many mages are super awesome at ambushes. In the end, this is already everything you need to know about the rotation in the early and mid game. Clear your wave mid, rotate to the sideline where you need it or to the turtle and force as many ganks as possible. All of this is much easier in higher ranks because you usually rotate together with a tank. In lower ranks, you are on your own, so while you rotate around alone, you are much more vulnerable to ambushes. So make sure that you are really careful when rotating. Once you pass minute 6 to 8, your carry role will often change to a support role for the jungler. Your best bet is to stick together with him and support him with your CC skills and your damage output. If your jungler is rubbish, you can also stick together with the best teammate that you have. And since I was mentioning the jungler already, you guessed it right, let's talk about him next. Another smooth transition. Yes! A jungler obviously doesn't have a lane, since he is supposed to farm in the jungle. That's why the name. This makes him rotating around basically non-stop. Before the match even started, think about if the enemy could try to invade your jungle. When they have heroes like Franco or Jord as a tank, you can be almost 100% sure that they will. Try to convince your team to help you, because alone you have almost no chance against them. If you have no help, because your teammates like to lose, I would suggest that you start with a red buff. Usually, if the enemy tries to delay your farm, they will wait at the blue buff for you. So you can try to clear the red buff quickly before they arrive to get at least some farm. You could call it damage control. Sometimes you have to take the second or third best option because the best one is denied by your blind teammates. In my recent Saber game, none of my teammates ever bothered to help me at the turtle, so I've lost all of them. The best thing you can do in a situation like this is to stay alive and continue farming. If you try to force it, like me here, you will just lose out. I love playing in legend rank. So, back to the early rotation. As jungler, you should make sure to reach level 4 as soon as possible, preferably before your counterpart. Usually, the rotation should look like this. You start with a buff on the opposite side of the turtle lane and move on 
to contest a Pokemon. Next you can clear the second buff and continue with the small camp next to the side lane you are moving to. If you've done all that, you should reach level 4 and you can signal that you want to start a gank. Your hopefully smart mid laner and tank will have the same idea. So after you successfully gank the lane, you should be able to take the turtle with the help of your teammates. In general, this is your one important task as a jungler. Make sure to secure the turtle. This gives your whole team a huge advantage over the enemy. So as soon as it spawns, you should make sure to secure it. After the turtle is done, go back to farm the jungle and search for gank opportunities on the lanes. When you successfully ganked on the lane, make sure to push the lane together with your allies. This is not only giving you some gold, but also open up the jungle area for many more ambush opportunities. And that is what you as a jungler want. For the rotation part, this is basically everything you need to know already. Become level 4, first gank, insecure the turtle, clear jungle, gank more and push lanes, secure the turtle again and repeat. Like this, you should be able to destroy many of the enemy's outer towers and give your allies on the lane as much support as possible. Interesting it becomes once the lord is up, because you should focus now on getting the numbers advantage, so you are able to take it. As jungler, it's never more important to stay alive than here. If you are dead and the enemy's jungler is alive, you basically gifted the enemy a free chance to take the lord. Your focus on the gang should be to take out the enemy's jungler, so you can take the lord. But again, don't die trying. Let your tank and all the allies engage first and wait for the perfect moment to engage. That's usually when the enemy already used some skills, especially their CC skills. The last thing you want is ending up in the front line while your enemies can freely use their skills. After the enemy's jungler is dead, move directly to the lord and hope that your team is coming with you. That doesn't always work unfortunately, especially in lower ranks. Ah, before I forget it, if you manage to wipe out the enemy's team and they need some more time to respawn, you could also just push the lanes completely through and maybe even end the game. Whenever there is a chance to end the game, this is obviously a higher priority than anything else. Well, it's sadly not obvious, because I saw it already a thousand of times that the player is not ending the game, because he's busy farming the buffs. This is really an obsession for so many players. By the way, after you got the lord, you should wait for him to spawn. Many players jump into unnecessary ganks after securing the lord. So just have the patience and wait for the lord to run towards the enemy's base and try to finish it. If it doesn't work, wait for the next lord and repeat. <coughs> Just remember as jungler, stay alive and have your retribution ready for the lord. Damn, now I don't have a nice transition to the gang. Gang? Tank. I'm losing the ability to speak. Well, then let's talk first about today's secret keyword for the giveaway. It is... Rotate. Surprise! Again, all efforts about the giveaway you find in the description. Last, we have our wonderful tanks. Here we have the biggest difference in between lower and higher rank games I think. As mentioned in lower ranks, the tank usually stick together with the MN at the gold lane and he's kind of forced to do it, no matter what. So when playing in lower ranks, either try to tell your team to pick two strong side laners and getting told by them that you're a noob or go with the flow and try to support your MM while not forgetting to rotate to the turtle for example. If the enemies tries to invade your jungle from the start, you should help your jungler. This should be obvious. We will go through both situations. First, when you have to stick with your MM, make sure to protect him and create opportunities. For that, I love to use heroes like Tigreal or Kufra. You can stun the enemy's MM so long that your MM can kill him without much effort, if he follows up obviously. When it's time for the turtle, I will rotate there and support your jungler with vision. I will not go through the basics of how to be a tank now by the way, like creating vision, how to engage properly and so on. I've actually made a video for this. It was my fourth video I've ever created. So if you're fine with my newbie voiceover, you can check it out. Afterwards, go back to the gold lane and continue to support your MM. Being a tank in the lower ranks is more like being a babysitter for the MM actually. Follow the rotation of your MM, if possible. Some MMs just run around like headless chicken and doesn't even bother defending their lane. They better try to steal the red buff and tell other players that they are noobs, talking about being obsessed with the buffs. Others never move one bit away from the golden lane. So if you have someone like this, better try to stick together with a teammate you can count on, whether it's a jungler, mage or fighter. If you have no teammate you can count on, well... If it comes to ganks, make sure you're always in the middle of it. Your team might not wait for you when they start to fight. So you don't only have to anticipate what your enemy is doing, but also what your teammates are doing. 
Being a good tank in Mobile Legends is really the hardest task imaginable. If you have two strong side laners, you can go and support the jungler in the early game. Try to protect him from the enemy's invasion attempts and provide vision for him. You don't need to clear the jungle with him. Vision is way more important for him. After you've done that, you can rotate together with the mid laner and start to create chaos for the enemies on their lanes. If you play as a tank that has good skills to delay the enemy's jungler's farm, for example Tigreal, Franco or Jawhead, you should also use it to your advantage and harass the enemy's jungler as much as possible. Just make sure to communicate it with your team. Otherwise, the rotation is pretty similar to the mid laner. Always be in the middle of the trouble and where you're the most needed. Also remember, a good carry is scary, but a good tank is just absolutely terrifying. Or something like that. Now, go and check out the videos I've mentioned in this video. See you over there.